All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to Lean In Olympia. So glad you're here. I'm Corey Passens. I'm here with Interfaith Works. Interfaith Works is a social justice nonprofit serving Thurston County. We're the region's largest social service provider to homeless adults experiencing homelessness. And we're also a coalition of 30 plus diverse faith communities and affiliated organizations. This is Lean in Olympia. It's a bi-weekly podcast coming to you from Olympia that features conversations at the crossroads of humanity, justice, and belief. And if you want to check out past episodes, you can find those on our website, our YouTube channel, and on Spotify as well. So tune in and figure out what we're doing and just stay tuned to what we're up to. I want to welcome our guest today, Nicole Virgil. Hello, Nicole. Hi. Welcome. Um, you are going to be in Olympia tonight. We're broadcast, we're broadcasting or filming today on May 2nd. So tonight you'll be at the United Churches of Olympia. Um, this episode will be a wonderful chance for people who might not be able to see your talk tonight to be able to understand what you're doing and what you'll be talking about tonight at United Churches. So I'm really grateful for you taking some time today to sit down with us and share. With Absolutely. Your Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, you live in Chicago. How many kids do you have again? Your mother of I'm a mother of two, two, and I live a little bit outside of Chicago. Uh -huh. real, real Chicagoans would not like me okay. appropriating their town, <laughs> well. so I'm a suburbanite, but okay. 12 miles due west of Chicago in okay. Elmhurst, yeah. Thanks. And then you're the founder of Right to Garden, which um, was born out of you putting up a hoop house garden in your backyard to grow food. And yeah. then there was a dispute over that and permitting, and then you had just a, just a brief, you know, you know, legislative encounter with that of six years <laughs> to get it approved. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's amazing. Um, maybe we'll talk about that today too. Just more about you from your bio and from things you've shared with me. You graduated from the University of Maryland in 1992 with a BA in Italian vocal literature and the Cleveland Institute of Music before that. And you were a performing artist and an opera singer. Mm -hmm. and soap seller, but that's a story for another day, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're giving a talk this evening at the United Churches of Olympia. You're traveling in support of your role as the board of lectureship for the Christian Science Denomination. And as we begin, I just want to welcome you. Thank you for being here. Where did you you were just last night down in Vancouver, Washington. Is that right? Yeah, just outside of Vancouver. Um, there's a Christian Science Church in Camas, Washington. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, I believe it's just a little bit east of Vancouver. Uh -huh. And yeah, we did a lecture there last night. It was great. So you are you are the board of lectureship, which means you're holding that role for your denomination right now. Well, um, it's close. Uh, mm -hmm. I am a member of the Christian Science Board of Lectureship. Mm -hmm. There's 30 of us currently um, traveling internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm one, of those, one of those people that okay. travels around on a circuit. Okay. And how long is this term that you're in? You're in? All the members of the board of lectureship are... Um, for it's it's a one year term, so it started last July first, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it concludes this July thirtieth. Okay, I'm okay. sorry, June thirtieth. June thirtieth. <laughs> sorry, okay. I misspoke. So your your region, so to speak, is where then for your for your lectures for the first year we usually mm -hmm. stay on our continent just mm -hmm. because we're sort of getting our feet wet and mm -hmm. you know getting used to being on the road and whatnot mm -hmm. um if i'm appointed for another term which would be another year mm -hmm. um then the world is my oyster okay so, so you might you might go abroad after after this year that's certainly possible it's uh -huh. not guaranteed as all the invitations come from individual branch churches okay. and i couldn't possibly tell number one oops sorry uh, I don't know yet what, whether I'll be appointed for another mm -hmm. term. And then once uh, if I were appointed, where will the invitations will come from? I'm not sure, but okay. certainly I'm open to traveling. Okay. Well, let's talk about the lecture that's happening tonight um, because it's, so this is a good example of Interfaith Works, you know, supporting each other's programs. The The program will be held at uh, the United Churches of Olympia, which is a United Church of Christ um, and Presbyterian joint congregation mm -hmm. um, in support of the First Church of Christ scientist here in Olympia who is mm -hmm. hosting you in this talk. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us um, what is the, the purpose or the aim of this talk as it's offered as a public offering? That is people who aren't, Christian scientists are welcome to come. And right. well, what is the what is the theme or the the purpose and the, the focus of the talk and the lectureship circuit in general? 
Okay, so a bunch of questions yeah. there. So I'll t try to answer them yeah. individually and get me back on topic okay. if I come yeah. off. Um, the Board of Lectureship established in, in Boston, Massachusetts, by the headquarters of the Christian Science Church is established, as you said, to give public talks to people in communities where there are already Christian science churches. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't just go anywhere. We have to be invited by a, a branch church of Christian science because the purpose of that branch is to minister unto that, unto that community. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that they minister unto the community is through these public talks, which have mm -hmm. a wide range of topics. Mm -hmm. So my topic is Bible-based liberty. Mm -hmm. How do we find our freedom? Where mm -hmm. do you look for it? Once you find it, how do you hold on to it? Mm. What does the Bible have to say about that? Now, mm -hmm. you mentioned my um, advocacy work for the right to garden in the state of Illinois, mm -hmm. which predates my time on the board of lectureship. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting thing to note because that was a fight for liberty. Mm -hmm. And so the, my, my subsequent talk on liberty, which was developed, I don't know, seven or eight years after I started my garden advocacy mm -hmm. work, mm -hmm. it's really stemming from a, a long standing development of my love and appreciation for liberty as taught in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I was developing that over many years. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it would turn into a lecture circuit, mm -hmm. but then not surprisingly, when it was time to write a lecture, as all the members of the board of lectureship are required to do, we're not given a topic. It okay. has to be something organic, which comes out of us. Mm -hmm. And freedom is something that has been so integral mm -hmm. to my heart mm -hmm. and my being that I guess it's not really surprising to me now in retrospect uh -huh. that that had to be the first thing I would talk about if I was appointed to the board of lectureship. Mm -hmm. And so the purpose, from my perspective, is to express what does Christian science teach? Because Christian science is primarily Christian, mm -hmm. and so it's based on the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so we get all our teachings from the Bible. And so what does the Bible have to say about freedom? And I learned some things about that as I went through that fight for mm -hmm. my own liberty in my mm -hmm. backyard, mm -hmm. which have extrapolated now to a wide variety of circumstances. Now, in terms of my relationship with the local branch churches um, in each community, they all have different communities that mm -hmm. they are ministering onto. Mm -hmm. So when I receive an invitation, I will ask them, like, what's going on in your community? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The title of my talk is Be Set Free, mm -hmm. but some communities need to be set free from different things than others. Mm -hmm. And so it might be useful to target uh, mm -hmm. whatever that branch church is trying to support in that community. And mm -hmm. so we we do that work before the lecture for months in prayer, in mm -hmm. preparation uh, for elevating the community and mm -hmm. healing whatever the things that that particular community might need. Mm -hmm. And I work with the branch and they work with me. And mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't say it culminates in the lecture, but the lecture is one of the stops along the way in that work. And then after I leave town, of course, they will minister unto those who mm -hmm. have heard the message, but stay, they reside here. Mm -hmm. I don't reside here, so I'm yeah. going to be leaving. But that branch church can continue to foster and help pray and support and elevate those mm -hmm. who have heard the message mm -hmm. and maybe are like, oh, okay, I, I think I'd like to be set free. Mm -hmm. This makes sense to mm -hmm. me in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. And then the, you've got a church here that can help support that. I see. So the lecture really, it supports kind of a cultivation of a, awareness and focus for the, the congregation that's here. Yeah. But the people who attend, they are, you know, presumably not all going to be Christian science and they would be able to learn about the tradition and about your own experience and your connection with it in the talk tonight. So it's kind of a welcoming place in that way. Yeah, it, it hopefully will accomplish many things. Mm -hmm. One is to introduce, if you've never heard of Christian science yeah. or you don't know what it is, you'll get an introduction mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. It is a one hour talk, mm -hmm. so yeah. we can't get too in depth, but yeah. it'll be an introduction mm -hmm. for many. Mm -hmm. um, it will introduce them to the fact that there is a branch church here that can support them mm -hmm. if there's someone who's interested in pursuing mm -hmm. uh, a spiritual path along those lines. Mm -hmm. It will address the specific topic, in this case, liberty. Mm -hmm. It will address, um, it will offer some prayerful ideas or spiritual ideas that can be used for the specific topic that this branch church is praying about in this community, mm -hmm. which the First Church of Christ Scientist Olympia mm -hmm. has chosen to specific, of course, everybody is free to pray about mm -hmm. all the things all the time. Mm -hmm. This is just sort of a, we tee it up. So okay. we collaborate together, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. In, in our meetings, we share ideas with each other. Yeah. And they're working specifically on 
mental health as it relates to those people who are really volunteering and giving, you know, it's frequently the care workers mm -hmm. that get pretty mm -hmm. strained yeah. and stressed. Yeah. And how do we support them? <laughs> yeah. Right? Because that's a yeah. real thing. Yeah. And, and fear and mental health in general, anxiety, these mm -hmm. things are prevalent concerns for people. Yeah. And so that's what this particular branch has decided to pray about. So mm -hmm. I'll have some ideas going okay. through the lecture that will address that, which hopefully people in the community yeah. may find some utility in that. Oh, that's great. Well, if we can, let's take a moment to, let's assume this people who are, listening to this or watching this might may or may not be able to attend tonight. Sure. If we could take a moment to just um, kind of center and orient to what the tradition is that you're presenting. We've in this sure. space, um, we've been really fortunate to have local uh, our local rabbi come. We've have a, a a Zen practitioner come and in each of those instances I, I really try to not have assumptions about what people may or may not know about okay. the the tradition that enlivens their own life and that they speak about and that orients them. So would you be willing to share about how you understand the traditions and maybe some of the central offerings of what Christian science is? Sure. Where would you like me to start? Well, okay, let's start. How old is Christian science? Where did it start? Um, Mary Baker Eddy uh -huh. is the discoverer and founder of Christian science. Mm -hmm. And although you might identify 1866 as a year which there were some seminal events when she really honed in on the fact that there is a science to Christianity, meaning there are universal laws which allow for its practice. Whether seen or not seen, mm -hmm. whether understood or not understood, mm -hmm. there's actually a science there. Now, it didn't all just pop into her thought mm -hmm. at once, mm -hmm. but um, that was the year that I think perhaps the most intense portion of the investigation began, if mm -hmm. I can just summarize it very mm -hmm. briefly. Mm -hmm. um, she spent three years after that doing almost nothing but studying the Bible, trying to uncover a lot of what this science was on account of the fact that she had been healed both from decades-long chronic illnesses and an acute accident which was thought to be so fatal that when the minister and physician came to visit her at mm -hmm. a house call. They said they were going to go off to Sunday services and they would mm -hmm. come back to collect the body. Mm -hmm. So, wow. like, it was pretty bad looking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when they came back, she had actually asked for her Bible and read an account of one of Jesus' healing mm -hmm. in the New Testament, and she caught the Spirit of the Lord so clearly that she got up spontaneously and was healed. And that was the event that made her really think, okay, we got to see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. She knew that healing was possible. Mm -hmm. She had been a student of the Bible, as many, many people were. Mm -hmm. That's how a lot of people learned how to read in yeah. the 1800s, right? Mm -hmm. And her family um, was no different. And so mm -hmm. she had studied the Bible, but um, she really wanted to understand the how. Mm -hmm. What is the science here? Mm -hmm. And so that's what sort of propelled this intense search for the the universal laws, the mm -hmm. science of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And so from there, it just grew. Eventually, mm -hmm. it, she developed, um, this was in Boston, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. um, that the, the majority of this work and New Hampshire, she had different homes at different times. Okay. She established the, the Massachusetts Metaphysical College for, so people could come and study. And that grew to such large proportions that it actually made it difficult for her to fin finish her other work, which was estab establishing the First Church of Christ Scientist. Mm -hmm. And so there were different iterations of it as things tend to go. Yeah. Um, and eventually, you know, she had trained mm -hmm. enough people on these universal laws mm -hmm. that people could go out and heal, which is what Jesus actually asked us mm -hmm. to do, right? That's mm -hmm. not that's not new. Mm -hmm. And so um, healers were being trained and they were going back out into their own field of labor. They started healing people in different communities like Olympia mm -hmm. and branch churches were born. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a, that you did a great, that was a great yeah. summary. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's, that's fantastic. And so um, we're starting from, uh, American origins with yes. this, um, which is in, in Boston, Massachusetts, from Mary Baker Eddy. Um, to this day, the denomination is, is approximately what size then? And is it, it's international as well? It yes. is international, but uh -huh. per the Bible recommendation, we don't count numbers. So I, I have never seen any numbers. Mm -hmm. I couldn't, t I actually couldn't tell you. Okay. So we don't number the people, which is the terminology used in the Bible. Okay. So, so that's that's part of the teaching as well. Okay, so that's interpretation for 
for that perspective on how to quantize the denomination. Yeah. We are in, in all the states, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I know we're in Canada. We're in... Uh -huh. We're in a variety of different countries. We've got lecturers who are based, lecturers mm -hmm. who are based all over the world and mm -hmm. speak many different languages. Mm -hmm. So, In our conversation leading up to today, you also shared about a, a family lineage in, in your own story that was, that became part of the Christian science tradition, but was almost like pre-Christian science through your great grandmother. Is that right? Oh, yes. Yeah. Viney mama. Yeah. Yeah. Say it again, please. Viney, like grape vine. vine. Yeah. I just so said Viney. I didn't know. Yeah. If you mama. take the word vine uh -huh. and then put a Y mm -hmm. on the end of it, you'll have Viney. And in my family, um, back in the day, uh -huh. you would take the mom's first name and then put a hyphen and the word mama. Okay. And the dad's first name and a hyphen and then daddy. Okay. So Viney Mama was married to Henry Daddy. Okay, okay, and what year, can, tell us about Viney Mama and where, when was she alive? And because this is a, well, from what I remember with your story, this is an important link into how you f have a root and, and a connection into this tradition. Yeah, so um, Viney Mama was my, I always heard my mom talk about her, you know, my grandma because this was my mother's okay, grandmother. Grandma. Gotcha, okay. Right? And so um, my grandparents, my mother's parents, uh -huh. um, that was Maxine and Thomas, they made it to sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So they were 12 years old when they stopped school and started having kids. Mm. And so by 16 years old, they had three kids of wow. whom my mother was one. Wow. So... Okay, it's yeah. a mess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so because the household was so turbulent, mm -hmm. there was a lot of stress, there was no money, they would frequently send one or two of their kids over to Viney Mama's house for mm -hmm. months at a time mm -hmm. to just clear out a little bit. And mm -hmm. so my mom spent months of her life every year staying with Viney Mama. Mm -hmm. And so... Where, did she, where was this now? This is in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh, in, okay, and Viney Mama's yeah. in Boston, in Massachusetts. Yeah, Viney Mama was from the South. Uh -huh. I think she grew up around... In the Carolinas, I don't have okay. I don't have a family tree in uh -huh. specifics. Yeah, but she had moved up north with Henry Daddy, and mm -hmm. they had their family. They started their family up there. So, okay. um, my mom was raised in Stoneham, Massachusetts, right outside. When I say Boston, I mean the Greater Boston mm -hmm. area. Um, and so, yeah, she would go stay with Vanya Mama, mm -hmm. and Vanya Mama was not a Christian. And Vanya Mama never heard of Christian Science, mm -hmm. um, although. The headquarters of the Christian Science Church was in Boston. That was neither here nor there to my family. They didn't know about it. Um, what Vanya Mama did know is that the Bible promises that God will heal, mm -hmm. that God does heal in any manner, any number of cases. Mm -hmm. And so in their community, a lot of people didn't have money mm -hmm. or due to segregation, they didn't have access to hospitals. They mm -hmm. simply couldn't get access to mm -hmm. a doctor or if they could get access to a doctor, it wasn't a hospital you wanted to go to. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it would be better off to stay at home, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And so in that community, if people were ill, that you know, you still love your family members. Yeah. You still want them to be taken care of. You either don't have the money, you're segregated out or the place is too scary. So you go to Viney Mama and mm -hmm. Viney Mama would heal. Mm -hmm. And so... My mom would see this happening because she would stay with Viney Mama for mm -hmm. months at a time mm -hmm. and the people would come and go and Viney Mama was, she was broke. Mm -hmm. She didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. And this was also interesting to my mom mm -hmm. because there weren't a lot of job opportunities for people who looked like us back then. My mm -hmm. mom didn't see like, oh, look, I could go to Harvard next mm -hmm. door. Or I could, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't see those options mm -hmm. for her. So she saw Viney Mama, Mama healing and she was like, well, maybe I could do that. Mm -hmm. Like this, you know, because she would heal and people would bring her a chicken or they'd mm -hmm. bring her something for the yard or something mm -hmm. useful. It provided an economy for mm -hmm. the house, right? Mm -hmm. And so my mom was kind of trying to figure out, like, how can I do that? How can mm -hmm. I? It made her feel like there was a possibility that she could have some hope, some mm -hmm. future. Mm -hmm. She could help people mm -hmm. and she could feed herself yeah. without having to depend upon the normal channels of like maybe getting a college degree, which was out yeah. of the, they didn't have money for that. Okay. Or there weren't a lot of colleges that would accept, you know, black mm -hmm. folks at that time. So, um, so it, it looked like, you know, a possible way, but my mama couldn't explain how she did it. She just said that God's word was guaranteed and that God healed and she knew it and she did. And she did mm -hmm. heal. It was true, mm -hmm. but she didn't have the science. Okay. She didn't understand the how. Uh -huh. And so my mom was such a one that needed more, 
more words, Vaidi Mama. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we need more mm -hmm. words, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so she, my mom could see it, but she couldn't quite get her hands mm, around but it. She's witnessing it firsthand. Yeah. In in Vaidi Mama's house, people are coming. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so something's happening. Yeah. yeah. So my mom decided, well, I don't know how to heal spiritually, but maybe mm -hmm. I could, maybe I could go into nursing. Mm -hmm. Like that would be a way I could help people. But there weren't a lot of black nurses at that time either. Mm -hmm. And, but things were just starting to tilt right then in the sixties, civil rights movement. My mom prayed and pursued a lot of avenues and wound up being able to be the first black registered nurse graduating from the Boston Deaconess Hospital program. Wow. Wow. So she was right on the edge of where things were starting yeah. to become possible. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. was a big deal in their That's family because, mm -hmm. you know, her parents only made it through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. So even just finishing high school was a pretty big deal. Absolutely. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. So she became a head nurse and, and she really then tried to figure out this healing thing. Mm -hmm. You know, she had her nurses training. She had her colleagues now who went to a variety of different churches and she mm -hmm. would ask them about, you know, what do you know about Christian mm -hmm. healing or mm -hmm. like, do you know anything? Like, can you point mm -hmm. me? You know, she had access to more people to mm -hmm. ask. And yeah. she wasn't really getting a lot of productive answers. Sometimes people would say, yeah, there is Christian healing, but, you know, we have it. We see it in the Bible, but it's mm -hmm. over. That was mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago. And she would, be, she would say, like, She's uh, like, but, no. Okay. <laughs> like, uh -huh. see, my mama doing uh -huh. it. That's not 2,000 years mm -hmm. ago. So she didn't have the answers, but she was sniffing at something, mm -hmm. right? She knew, like, I think there's more here that mm. either I'm not asking the right questions or I don't know where to look or whatever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people would tell her that she just didn't have the talent. Like you can heal mm -hmm. today, but you need to have the gift. Okay. And she didn't have the gift. Okay. And that was kind of disappointing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, she knew it from Viney Mama, but she was still looking. And eventually she got married to my dad and my dad was a, a freelance musician mm -hmm. and performed uh, played the organ and directed choirs at dozens of Christian mm. churches up wow. and down the seaboard, mm. uh, New England seaboard. Yeah. And so, not surprisingly, that eventually he wound up substituting at a Christian science church. Mm -hmm. And my mom went there and asked people about healing. And mm -hmm. they said, yeah, come on Wednesday night. We have testimony meetings. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a regular thing here. And mm -hmm. she was like, really? Mm -hmm. Like, she had been looking for the better part of 10 years at that mm -hmm. point. So, mm -hmm. um so she, she found what she was looking for. By then, I will tell you, um, this, this won't be a spoiler alert for you, uh -huh. I guess, if yeah. you come tonight, but yeah. uh, by then I had been born and there were a lot of medical complications. And because she had then, her career had advanced because years had gone by, yeah. right, since the yeah. 60s. Now, many years had gone by and she had elevated in her career. She was now the head, head nurse at a large hospital. Wow. So she had access now to the best pediatric care and they were trying to treat my conditions, treating one exacerbated another and so on mm. and so on. This is mm -hmm. not uncommon when you've mm -hmm. got multiple comorbidities going on. Mm. Um, and so when she was at this Christian Science Church, she kind of asked very intently, like, mm -hmm what's going on here? Like, is there help? Yeah. And uh, she found... For, um, for her child, for you. Yeah. Uh -huh. She didn't tell them that up front. She okay. was like, just trying to, she was scared. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to get disappointed. So you know how you kind of walk around the bar mm -hmm. in the long way yeah. to see if it's okay. And mm -hmm. there was a guy there who helped her. Um, he offered to answer questions mm -hmm. for her. He was a Christian science practitioner mm -hmm. in the full-time practice of helping people through Christian science treatment. And they met for several weeks and she kind of grilled him with questions. Mm -hmm. And, um, at the end of it, she asked if, if he thought I could be healed. And he mm -hmm. said, sure. Mm. And sh it sounded to her like Viney Mama's words, like God's mm. word is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. And so I was healed. Mm -hmm. um, the conditions were, uh, I had large patches of my body that had no pigment in them. Mm. And we see I'm good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I had a breathing condition, which made my breathing so labored that you could hear it all over the house, which is unnerving, as you can imagine, mm -hmm. for a parent. Mm -hmm. And so both of those conditions were healed within weeks, and my mom became a Christian scientist. Wow. For people who aren't in the tradition itself, can you explain how that what what does that look like did were, did people come to your house is there touch involved is it is it um non-local you know um how does how does one go about offering that healing or being a part of it for people who aren't 
in the tradition as closely as you are? Yeah. Um, it doesn't involve physical touch. Mm -hmm. Um, we stick pretty closely, um, to following, you know, Jesus is called the way shower. So we believe mm -hmm. he showed us the way. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus healed frequently without even being anywhere near the person mm -hmm. he was yeah. healing. And we understand that because God is omnipresent, the presence of God is everywhere that mm -hmm. like everywhere simultaneously. It's not like he's translocating, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you ask for something and then God's got to like take 14 steps to mm -hmm. get there, right? Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have to move around. He's mm -hmm. in one place all, at, all the time. Mm -hmm. And so... Jesus showed us a way where by, by recognizing our communion with God, our at one with God, that healing could take place independent of any material circumstances. Mm. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I guess that's a pretty simple way to, t mm -hmm. to state it. Mm -hmm. It results from the shift in thought, right? So when Jesus used the word repent, we know that that word means to change, mm -hmm. change your thinking. Mm -hmm. And when thinking changes, healing frequently results mm -hmm. um, in a wide variety of areas, not just physical. Mm -hmm. so, so, does that, does that mean that there's a relationship between the person who's being healed and there's some kind of um, commitment or engagement that they need to be a part of as well? Or they're not just receiving it vicariously? Do, does that make sense what I'm saying? Like you're talking about a change in thought or change in concept for the person who's healed. I see. Does that mean that they are they are a willing and active um, participant in the healing or is it just some or is it something they can like receive from a practitioner? Yeah. Okay, so I hope to be clear here. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to be a Christian scientist to be healed by a Christian scientist or through Christian science practice. Mm -hmm. But we don't trespass in other people's consciousness. Mm -hmm. This is a question of the respect of one's own dominion. Mm -hmm. So a person would request Christian science treatment. They would invite you mm -hmm. to pray with and for them. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, give their consent to what we would say in Christian science, we have seven synonyms for God. And one of them is, is mind, mm -hmm. infinite mind, mm -hmm. eternal, right? And so mind must in this tradition of thought mm -hmm. be the source of all thoughts be the source of all mental activity, divine mind would be. So healing is actually the activity of divine mind, mm -hmm. not one human mind controlling another mind, mm -hmm. but rather submitting ourselves. It's, it's kind of like when you do math. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm making nine times nine 81. Mm -hmm. It already is 81. Mm -hmm. I just yield to it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So healing is not me creating health. Mm -hmm. It's just yielding to the health that already exists mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is God. But I'm hearing there's a relational component as well. Like for the person who is healed, there's some there's some aspect, you know, you use consent, there's some aspect of willingness of being a part of. Yes, in the same way that a, a math student uh -huh. has to be willing to accept the principle of mathematics. Mm -hmm. They might not see it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, when, I don't know if you have kids, but when mm -hmm. you're teaching them math facts, uh -huh. if, when they're in elementary school, they can get kind of stressed out uh -huh. thinking like, I can't do it, I Well, can't I just do had it. a flashback to my yeah. grade school math, so <laughs> yeah. thanks for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but when there's fear there, and the Bible tells us fear needs to be put down, mm -hmm. and when fear is put down, we can accept principle, which is another one of Christian science's names for God. Mm. And so, like ex when you're will when you're not afraid anymore, you can get the principle of addition. You can get the principle of subtraction, or it's always there. Mm. It's ever present. Mm -hmm. It's not dependent upon you praying in a special way or thinking, but you, you just have to accept it. Mm. And once you accept it and see it, there you go. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing extra and it's not personal. One person doesn't have more access to addition than another person has mm -hmm. access to addition. Mm -hmm. It's free to all. Mm -hmm. Anyone who mm -hmm. will be willingly taught, even if you were ignorant of multiplication or ignorant of some principle of algebra, say, if you'll allow your thinking to be led, and I'm sure you've seen people who excel as students, they're very receptive. They mm -hmm. pick things up real fast. Mm -hmm. This would be uh, the quality of soil in which seeds germinate easily, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That's a mental state that's quite receptive. Mm -hmm. um, some people 
resist a little bit more, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. they can get there, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. you need to amend the soil a little bit, mm-hmm. have a little bit more humility, mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit more patience. We work with the soil and the seed germinates. Okay. For those who are in the tradition, in the Christian science tradition, is healing um, welcome to recognize through means both with both via prayer, but also beyond prayer, like our allopathic or Western medicine approaches also welcomed in um, as healing methods in the Christian science tradition as well. So Christian scientists are not policed by the church. Mm-hmm. Freedom, again, my yeah. a topic close to my heart, yeah. is an integral part of Christian science practice. So people are free to make whatever decisions they need to at mm-hmm. any time, and they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no Christian science police. Mm-hmm. However, now having said that, individual mm-hmm. liberty being integral to the practice of Christian science, Christian science treatment offered by a practitioner, or even when one is praying for oneself, depends. It's It's a wholly mental practice. So... Our aim in Christian science treatment is to wholly orient thought to the omnipotence of spirit, God. Can you say that one more time? Our orientation of thought to change thought, Uh that word repent that Jesus used, Uh to to change our thought to see that God is all power. There is no power other than God. This is a mental state where I was talking Mm -hmm. about... uh, sort of being a fertile soil Mm -hmm. where your consciousness is fertile. Mm -hmm. It would then be antithetical to that practice to also believe that there's power in matter because spirit and matter are opposites. So the practice of Christian science requires consciousness to be 100% and radically invested in the idea of spirit, God being the only power. As this is done, like in the case with my healing when I was mm-hmm. younger and, and my mom's fear was ameliorated by understanding she didn't have responsibility for me, God did. Mm-hmm. She could trust God's omnipotence. That's what cured her fear and that's therefore what healed my diseased conditions. Mm-hmm. So one of the things she learned when she was being a medical nurse was that you could also um, alleviate pain because at that time there were no... Uh, what do you say, cell phones, pagers, Mm -hmm. whatever. You couldn't get a hold Mm -hmm. of the doctor Mm -hmm. when they left. Mm -hmm. And the nurses weren't allowed to write prescriptions. Mm -hmm. So when people were in pain, what were the nurses supposed to do? Mm -hmm. They had big jars of placebos, Mm -hmm. and they very often worked. Mm -hmm. And so she came to understand that it wasn't the pill that had the power. Mm -hmm. It was the the belief in the pill Mm -hmm. that had the power. Mm -hmm. So in Christian science, it is our aim to have our belief wholly submitted to the power of God, mm-hmm. not to the, to divide it and split it in two between the power of some material treatment and some spiritual treatment. Mm-hmm. I understand that that is absolutely some people's choice and their choice should be respected. Mm-hmm. And that's why there's no Christian science police. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, I always say Christian science is a science. You should run an experiment, mm-hmm. run experiments, mm-hmm. try different things out. Mm-hmm. Certainly Mrs. Eddy did mm-hmm. um, in her investigations. She had a, a wide variety of methods that she tried in seeking cure for herself and others um, and landed on a, a system wholly reliant on the power of spirit. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that. There's a lot in there uh, for that Sorry. response. No, it's it's good. I mean, it's what we're what we're getting a sense of is there's a different um, fundamental perception yeah. of reality that's happening in some of the tenets yeah. of Christian Science, and without without those fundamentals being, you know, I think really having spending spending a lot of time with them. Um, being in conversation with people, it might be it might be challenging to really understand some of these dynamics without those fundamentals in place about spirit and matter. Sure. About how a tradition like yours understands the perceptions of God working through those dynamics, because mm-hmm. <clears throat> there are various ways of t- of thinking about the interaction of matter and spirit that mm-hmm. are that are different mm-hmm. from this perception that you're you're offering with Christian science. So this mm-hmm. is a, a a, a way of looking at that in, in, a, in a particular way. Which is why everybody really has to be free mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. explore and find what works. Um, mm-hmm. I find everybody can't go in the same path. Everybody mm-hmm. can't go in the same order as they learn different things. Mm-hmm. And God guides that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's no push in Christian science to make make someone 
think a thing mm-hmm. or do a thing. That That's not part of Christian science practice. When you say it's not part of it, is that, <clears throat> when you make that statement, is that 100% accurate to to every like expression or every church? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to investigate, um, are there any cultures in Christian science or churches that, that have a different sort of slant? Like, or are there more evangelical? Are there more, <clears throat> more fundamentalist? Oh. And, and what, I'm just trying to investigate how this concept of liberty that you're talking about and this, and you, and you present a very um, respectful type of um, culture for other people and their own beliefs too. How, how prevalent is that across Christian science? Is that the norm? Well, um, I think probably actually the norm in Christian science Mm -hmm. culture, because there is the science of a thing and then there's how humans do it, Mm -hmm. which is the culture. And from my exposure, I've been lecturing for less than a year now, but I've seen more churches in the past year than I have in my whole life Mm -hmm. because I've been interacting with so many different Mm -hmm. ones of them. It seems to me actually the culture is a little bit on the restrained side. Mm. Um, Some of that's... I don't know. Some of that's because Mm -hmm. people, the culture of Christian science, like every tradition, it must have developed through some phases and and times Mm -hmm. and periods and epochs. Mm -hmm. And um, I I can't say why all of that is, but my observation is people in general um, really don't want to, to push on people, Mm -hmm. but that's, so that's a cultural thing that's maybe developed just, as it has developed. Yeah. But there's also, we have something called a church manual. So our church is dissimilar from other churches in that we don't have uh, the same style of har- hierarchy mm-hmm. that some churches have. Um, so it's a church of lay people. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the most part, they're all elected by mm-hmm. other lay people mm-hmm. <laughs> for terms mm-hmm. or periods. And so then you have to ask, well, who's then running the church if it's Mm -hmm. all lay people? Mm -hmm. Well, we have something called the Church Manual, which was written by Mary Baker Eddy, Mm -hmm. and it pretty well provides the structure for how things are supposed to be done. And and so we're pretty attentive, Christian scientists, like Mm -hmm. we know our church manual Mm because that's kind of the boss, Uh if you will. Uh And so in that church manual, there's a pretty strict uh, bylaw about not proselytizing, Mm -hmm. period. Mm. And so that's part of that. That's a pretty strong. Everybody who joins the church understands when you join the church, you're signing on for that. Mm. The way that we understand or interpret Jesus' teaching that we're supposed to let our light shine, mm-hmm. like he talks about the city on the hill that can't be hid, mm-hmm. we believe that's done through healing. Mm. When you heal someone, it's God's light that's shining, mm-hmm. and the person who's healed very well sees the light. Mm-hmm. You don't need to proselytize. Mm-hmm. Just do the healing work as Jesus did. Mm-hmm. That's sufficient. So it's, it's literally written into the structures of the culture <clears throat> of the tradition to yeah. not be outgoing in that way. I Yeah, I, yeah. you could put it that way. I mean, mm-hmm. look, <clears throat> it, if Christian scientists follow in Jesus' path the uh-huh. way as he taught, if they heal the way that Jesus taught, mm-hmm. you don't have to talk a lot. Mm. And if you're talking a lot without healing, you don't really have much to say. Yeah. Because the practice of Christianity as taught by Christ Jesus mm-hmm. intrinsically involves healing the sick, raising mm-hmm. the dead, cast out lepers, right? That's what he said. Freely ye have received freely give. Mm. That's the practice. So mm-hmm. wherever that's happening authentically, yeah. um, people will talk enough. Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh-huh. You don't have to run your mouth so much, I think. So there's a there's a trust in that and just that that's the that's the way that the the tradition will propagate itself, will continue in its authentic path. Right. And people will come to it in that way. And it's a litmus test for the Christian scientist. If you're not healing, mm-hmm. best figure out why. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that, so that's an active, tell me more about that. Is, is that a, an agreed or even like spoken or written part of the tradition too, that the there's an actual litmus or an expression you kind of judge or test your congregation by? Um, With the this healings? is individual. Individually. It's not, there, again, there's no Christian science police. Yeah, yeah. So this is between you and God. You know what your own experience is. Mm. 
And the standard is set forth by Christ Jesus and elucidated in the Christian Science textbook. Anybody who's studying Christian Science is well aware of it, but it's not my job to police you. Mm -hmm. That's between you and God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can do that or you mm -hmm. cannot do that, but it's not my job to to regulate you in that yeah. regard. Yeah, but it is something that, that the sign, the tradition looks at to see how vibrant maybe the... Well, I think the, the Bible passage that might, one Bible passage that might be most relevant is mm -hmm. by their fruits, ye shall know them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the fruits are listed. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Raise the dead. <laughs> yeah. Right, like, yeah. so, I mean, With you know, there's a and point. patience and different types of, there are there are fruits that are diverse from just physical or healings, though. Well, absolutely, uh -huh. it includes everything, but it doesn't leave those out to a different sector of the population. Yeah, it doesn't say help people with grief. Right? It, the Beatitudes talk about you know yeah. um, comfort, such as mourn. Yes, mm -hmm. we follow all of Jesus' yeah. teaching, but we don't eliminate some in favor of saying, "Well, we're doing these, so we don't mm -hmm. have to do these." It's all the things. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have to comfort such as mourn. Yes, we have to take care of the widows and the orphans. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have to, all the things. Yeah, yeah, all of it. Yeah, I think. Thank you for just allowing me to, to you're, you're modeling freedom for me to be able to investigate and inquire. Yes. You know, um, yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, you, you've mentioned the words culture and in the tradition too. Um, and you talk about freedom and liberty a lot in your own um, political orientations and activity too. Mm. How do you identify politically or do you? Um, I would say uh, either independent or mm -hmm. small L libertarian. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I affiliate with the Libertarian Party, uh -huh. but there are some ideas there that I like. Okay. Yeah. Um, so mo probably independent. Independent, yeah. I'm I'm a member of the United Church of Christ, and it's um, a denomination that when you look at the demographics across the national um, spectrum, there's a really interesting diversity. There's no there's no real majority, even though the denomination itself is known as a really progressive denomination, and it is based on the resolutions that it's passed historically. Those resolutions aren't binding to any particular congregation. And so when you look at some of the political demographics of the denomination writ large across the nation, they're actually pretty balanced between, you know, what you could say, you know, progressive or conservative. And I just find that fascinating, mm. you know. And I'm just curious, do you have any idea of how the that spectrum exists in Christian science? In Christian science? Yeah. Like I know that it kind exists. Of, the breadth of diversity. Yeah, I know it exists, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't have percentages on anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I see it when I go to different, I mean, it's, churches in Texas are not churches in California, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, even just from a regional standpoint, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think I could speak to it more than that. Okay. Yeah. What are the tenets that you look to in the tradition itself that um, that foster that kind of hospitality or welcome and freedom. I'm sorry, what are the tenets Yeah, that in, in the tradition that, that offer that kind of hospitality of diversity? Like in a, for, for example, if there was a congregation that had diverse political perspectives in it or an area of a country that had different congregations that had different political perspectives, what inside the tradition would allow them to, to, to feel a sense of hospitality between themselves. So Christian science is a little bit different. It takes a slightly different approach to this than I think the context that you might be mm -hmm. asking from. Okay. In that, like when Mrs. Eddy was asked, what are your politics? She yeah. said, I have none mm. except to follow God. Mm. Mm -hmm. She instructs her students to pray to support wisdom, like for King Solomon, for the government, mm. like mm -hmm. support your government through prayer, mm -hmm. not support one side of government or another. Mm -hmm. um, people are free to pray, and it's encouraged that they do, and then come to their highest sense of what is right, mm -hmm. and to do what is nearest right under the, cir under the circumstances, mm -hmm. and then mind your business. Mm -hmm. Meaning, again, we're not proselytizing, not mm -hmm. just to people outside of the church, but to each other. Mm. This is a conduit that is between God and mm -hmm. the individual 
um, member. Mm. It's not the place of other members to dictate that you should be more this or more that. Mm. In fact, to the contrary, Christian science believes so intensely that God is your mind. Mm. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. that regular communion with God will direct you to what you need to see. It doesn't say, let this mind be in you, which was in your neighbor. Mm. Look to your, like, so that's not really the jurisdiction of the church to direct, support, propose, uh, or anything in that direction. Mm -hmm. It supports the capacity of the individual <clears throat> to contribute to the community through an intimate relationship with God, which will inform their best contribution far better than an individual person could. Mm. And that's kind of the context of the science. It's universal mm -hmm. and it's actually, it's, it's impersonal in a kind of way, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, it's but a little bit of a different impersonal. Yeah, thought. I see how that kind of the transcendent aspect of it. Yeah, as well. it's not meant to be cold, mm. it, but it supports the individual in working out your own salvation with God. And the church really supports that you have that relationship with God because he's your creator, and he's your mind. And so you're, you are abundantly and infinitely free to know you're not limited. For example, sometimes you get involved with a human organization, even if it's just a group of your friends, mm -hmm. and you don't even realize until 10 years later mm -hmm. that your thinking was somewhat circumscribed by the conversations you were having with your pals. Yeah, absolutely. And not yeah. even realizing it at the time. Yeah. This is the thing that Christian science uses the science of Christianity to break. Mm. We're not saying, we're, we're tending <clears throat> towards supporting like, Individuals, and you'll hear me mention this mm -hmm. at the talk tonight, like like Frederick Douglass. Okay. There was nobody around him who thought he was free. Mm. There was no evidence to support it. Black people weren't allowed to read, so mm -hmm. he couldn't read it. Mm -hmm. His family before him were slaves, so the government knew he was a slave. They had paperwork to, the, to that effect. Mm. The slave owner knew he was a slave. His family knew he was like, but he came to know something that nobody else around him could know. Mm -hmm through his intuition and mm. relationship with God. That's what Christian science supports. Mm. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're saying you need the people around you to provide more or less direction, support, whatever, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order for you to get up to your highest potential good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would not support that conclusion. Mm -hmm. We would say that the individual, because God is the only power, he's not most of the power in Christian science. He's mm -hmm. all the power. So we don't cede any power to these other influences, but rather we support that the individual has the immediate capacity to be intimately aware of all that he needs to know directly from God, mm -hmm. which is what Frederick Douglass did, which mm -hmm. was what led to his freedom, mm -hmm. in spite of the fact that nobody else could see it. It wasn't validated externally. There's no place to find it. Yeah. So what would happen if people recognize that conduit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't diminish our relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. It would strengthen them because mm -hmm. we wouldn't be sort of overlaying our opinions and limitations on other people. Yeah. Every individual would be free to shine, mm -hmm. irrespective of is the person next to me ready to see that level of mm. demonstration or not? Or yeah. are they going to be self-conscious or what? Well, or how do they correspond with the way I see the, you know, my own particular right. regional local beliefs or, or something like that? Right. Yeah. So the Christian Science Identities. Church as a whole mm -hmm. is set up to support the individual's mm -hmm. relationship with God. And then I think culturally, we mm -hmm. I'm not saying individuals, don't deviate from this. Of mm -hmm. course, you have that in every human uh -huh. organization. But generally, people try to mind their business. Like, if you ask me a question, I'll answer it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to push on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for for that. And I I just want to just recognize the what we what we're doing today and what we're exploring is just a moment of interfaith sharing. Yeah, and this is. This is a, a part of who we are as an organization and social justice and peace through interfaith cooperation and, and understanding is the mission of Interfaith Works. So what you're doing today uh, and, and tonight at your talk is um, really just sharing with us uh, hospitality into a tradition that's enlivened your life and that's been a part of your family lineage and yeah. has a wonderful uh, story and in, in the American story too, but also yeah. in the lineage of of religions too. So thank you so much for sharing today. Yeah. I look forward to your talk tonight. 
you know, I, I wrap up my episodes by asking people how they define hope or where they see hope um, in the world today. And, and it's, a, it's an open opportunity to give that word a definition or to name it in a way that resonates with you and a, to name it a way that you see it happening in our world today. So how would you conclude with that? Gosh, that's a big question. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, just because we were just talking about it, it's it's pretty close to tip of thought. Mm -hmm. So I'll go back to to the evidence of Frederick Douglass. Mm. Impossibilities don't occur. So what that man did by knowing the truth, which set him free, is a present possibility for anyone who scientifically understands that Christian fact. Mm. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. It's universal mm. to anyone, and we have so many circumstances in the world where people are needing freedom mm -hmm. from oppression, from poverty, from struggles mm -hmm. of immense proportions. And it does give me great hope when I think of people like Frederick Douglass or others mm -hmm. um, who followed Jesus' teaching with this little principle, mm -hmm. ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free, and they were able to exercise it and demonstrate their freedom mm. irrespective of what the whole world around them would have said was possible. Mm. That gives me great hope because mm. you mm. can't bail out the ocean with a teaspoon. Even if mm -hmm. I would help everyone, which my heart would want to, mm -hmm. I can't be everywhere, mm -hmm. but the truth can be. Mm -hmm. So that gives me hope. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, our guest today has been Nicole Virgil. You're doing a talk tonight, well, on this date, <laughs> at yep. United Churches of Olympia. What you've offered today is a chance for people who might not be able to be there tonight to get to know you a little bit more and your tradition, yep. how you hold it and share it and and uh, welcome dialogue around it. So I just appreciate that, appreciate you. And again, this has been Lean in Olympia. If you wanna check out past episodes, you can find them on our website at interfaith-works.org or our YouTube channel or Facebook and also Spotify for just the audio part of this podcast. So again, thank you for being here today. Peace to all of you and be well. Mm -hmm.